Hey, what's up? I'm Alex. This is Thor. Welcome to Nautilus. Come check it out. Yeah, welcome to the Nautilus. This is my lovely van that was put together by Camp Life Customs in San Diego. And I'm really excited to show you this uh, vision came to be based on an idea of turning my live workstation that I would have as an office. Professionally, I work as a video editor, but also I really love to go on adventures as well. So this turned out to be my mobile home slash office on wheels. And it's a uh, podcast studio as well. That's like one of my main things I like to do. So as you can see here, I got a really cool little hangout area where uh, I have a really great long table that pops out. And this is, uh, was important when designing the van for the podcasting because what I have is just one microphone set up here right now, but usually I have two. So I'll have me sitting over there and my guest sitting over here. And then I use a, a 360 degree camera, which is very helpful for uh, keeping people in the zone without feeling like there's too many cameras on you. Sometimes that can alter the experience a bit. So it's really low profile, but really beautiful design with the LED lights in here. I do a lot of video editing, video production stuff, and podcasts, and Thor likes to hang out with me most of the time. So this is where I usually work. <laughs> so the aesthetic of the van build was extremely important to me. As an artist, I find that my workspace has to reflect my state of mind and my personality. And growing up and going to school and every single bedroom I had or dorm room or place I lived always had like a lot of trippy lights in it so I wanted to make sure that my van had that same vibe that this does so uh, when I sat down with Bobby and Adam and discussed the van build and all the practical things I wanted such as like you know the air conditioning the heating the lighting and all these things uh, also sitting down with Adam and discussing the look and how I was gonna feel in here uh, it was a really intuitive process and felt very comfortable talking with them about what I wanted in my mind and they gave me uh, like the, well, yes, that would be cool, we could do it, but maybe we should try something different that would be more practical since they're more experienced in like actually building a van. So uh, it was really cool. So I, number one, saw a lot of van builds that had really cool color changing LED lights in them. So I was like, I need to have a lot of those. I wanna have more of those than I've seen in any other van build. So that's, as you can see, I've got this like, um, really interesting design here with the staggered lights so they're not all coming down at the same place that was intentional discussing with uh, Adam to see other not van builds but some other places that had lights that were kind of staggered I, I like the the uh, kind of asymmetrical look that came with this van so um, that's where you get these color changing lights it comes with a really cool little remote here which uh, is interesting because it's totally custom and you can really reprogram the lights to do any color changes you want. So when I'm doing my uh, podcast, usually part of the experience is I'll have my guests ask, I'll ask them what their favorite color is and then I'll put the lights on and they're always like, whoa. It's always fun showing off the van. It makes me feel really good. Um, but I usually will leave it on red or purple, kind of like this sometimes, but for, for now we'll just leave it like this. Um, the dark side and the light side. I'm a big Star Wars fan as well. So the aesthetic of the lights was important, but also the type of wood that they used was bamboo. It's not only functional, very light, but it's very sturdy and it lasts a long time and it's got a really nice look to it. Um, one of the really cool things that went into the design, the aesthetic of this build was the curved wall here. I'm also a really big fan of Star Trek. And in Star Trek, there is this thing called the holodeck where you have to walk through these like hologram arches to go into this simulated world of Star Trek, right? So this curved wall here, Adam had showed me a really cool, uh, I think it was like just a wall inside of an apartment 
And he was like, oh, how about this? I, I didn't even think of that. These guys came up with like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of getting a tattoo sometimes. I'm like, oh, I want to get this tattoo. And then when the artist is like, yeah, but you know, we could add some flames and we can have this thing come up over here. And I'm just like, yes, yes, let's do all that. So uh, that's kind of what it was like with Camp Life Customs. I gave them my ideas and then they really brought so much more creativity to it that I couldn't even have thought of. This curved wall here was, I believe, a relatively new design for them to do. They put so much work into fabricating the steel, welding the steel to the van, which is another really cool thing about this van. Unlike a lot of other van builds that are really wonderful that people do all on their own, uh, these guys weld everything with steel. So even the build within the van is gonna potentially even outlive the lifespan of the van itself. This thing is like a house on wheels. It's not, <laughs> it's very, very sturdy. So this curved wall here, watching the uh, progress videos when they were putting this thing together was really cool. The amount of detail they had to go in here with the electronics and the wiring. But this curved wall, I think just adds a really, really cool aesthetic to the van. Adds a lot more space and it's very unique. There is a, uh, another really important design function or really another great design feature that I wanted to have in this van was an accent to the ceiling. So as you can see above me here, I have this really cool uh, geometrical pattern, which is from one of my favorite movies, uh, one of my favorite film directors of all time, Stanley Kubrick, uh, his film called The Shining. And if you haven't seen it, sometimes it's, uh, people think it's a scary movie. I don't always mention, I'm like, oh yeah, have you seen The Shining? Step into my van, it's just like The Shining. No, don't wanna do that. So, uh, But I really like this design because of the colors in all of this nice wood design in here. It adds a nice pop with the oranges and the reds and it's got this great hexagonal pattern. So again, adds to the trippiness of the van. That was really important to me. I wanted to make sure that I felt like it reflected my personality. And one of my nicknames is Trippy Lippy as well. So like it kind of works out good that way. Um, and they did such a great light, uh, job with the top lights. So if you want to just turn all the trippiness down and just have some regular lighting, these lights stay on all by themselves as well. And I've got air conditioning and two fans built into this wonderful accent track on the ceiling. So it's, uh, it's really a dream come true. And then another one little, one last thing is uh, in the bamboo paneling here, there are these little wood dowels that they put and there are a whole bunch of them. They actually made them the same hexagonal pattern like it's on the ceiling and they painted them red to match the colors that they had on the ceiling. So it was just like the amazing attention to detail that Camp Life Customs did. And Bobby also pointed out to me this great design they did. I didn't ask for this either, but it just surprised me with it, which was beautiful. These little bow ties that they laser engraved, I believe laser engraved into the, into the bamboo. Just like so incredibly beautiful. And it's a nice little touch that just really reflects the entire vision and design of what I was going for with this van. So as you can see here, this is when the bed is fully extended. Now, what's really cool is that when the van was being designed and built, this was not part of my original intention. I didn't think of this at all, but act actually after I dropped the van off at the Bobby at Camp Life Customs, they called me up and said, Alex, we need to put this bed in a place where we can pull it out to a king size bed. They tried to explain it to me, but it's fun. like, I, I didn't really understand what they were saying. And I'm like, oh, all right, but it's like, as long as I can still have the bed the way they're like, oh yeah, 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 it's gonna be exactly the way you want it, but this is gonna be awesome. And I didn't realize the pen, uh, potential of it until uh, I first got the van last year. And so easy to pull this thing out and really makes a huge difference. Like having this huge bed space is awesome. It's like just makes it so much more cozy. And then the table that slides out still actually comes out to about here. So it's, uh, really easy to do and it adds just a whole nother level to how awesome and comfortable this van can be. So what's really cool about this van is the amount of space that's in here. A lot of vans you'll see have just big bathroom and cabinets on either side. You're kind of walking through a little galleyway the whole time. Uh, it was very important to me to have as much open free space in here as possible, not just for my own peace of mind, because if you're living in a van down by the river or you're working in a van down by the river, you got to make sure that you feel comfortable and open. I don't want to feel claustrophobic in here. So part of the other design was having as much space as possible. Underneath this bench and this one, there is a ton of storage. So these fold up and I keep all of my odds and ends things in here. I actually have more space in here than I even thought 
I would need to use. So I have uh, room for all my video production equipment, cooking stuff. But uh, what's cool is that under here, we have a uh, toilet, working dry flush toilet. It's kind of like a, a NASA space toilet, it uses like a vacuum seal. Uh, I will not demonstrate it for you because I'm sure no one wants to see that, but I will show you where the toilet actually is. And sometimes <laughs> being in a van, it's like playing Tetris a little bit and you gotta move some things around. But the toilet is in here and it slides out on a little tray. And then there you go, you can do your business. And uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of an odd feeling sitting inside your van. You know, I gotta put up all the windows so no one can see you doing your business in here. You can kind of like wave sitting on the Iron Throne or the plastic throne as it is. But that's where you do your business. And I'll show you the garage later, but that's where the, uh, there's uh, underneath the bed is where all the electrical and the plumbing and stuff is. But they did a really good job at putting it all together, looking it all nice and clean. So we got all this great storage in the van. This cushion, of course, is for the bed and it also works as a nice little backrest right here um, for if you're sitting down. But to check the storage, you just easily pick, take these things down here. Again, it's a little like Tetris, but once you get used to it, it is what it is. This pops open here and this is where I keep all of my video production equipment. So like tripods, stands, cameras, lights, sound, stuff like that and uh, that closes nicely. And then in here is where I have like odds and ends kitchen stuff. I got a little blend, a little, <laughs> I got a little blender and a toaster oven and some frying pans. Still have plenty of storage. Like I haven't really even utilized all the space in here yet, which is great. It's better to have, have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And what's nice about this long cushion too is that when I have guests here, if it's me and some others in the van, this is a really comfortable, easy, like single bed for one person. And also right here as well, I got storage underneath each of these. And this also, you can fit one person here. So you could have comfortably, I think, you know, two people in the bed, one person here, another person there. But, uh, you know, four people in a van, even though there's plenty of room, could get a little crowded. So either way though, it's super comfortable, really easy to access all the storage. And then of course the massive amount of storage. I had this long uh, overhead compartment with plenty of storage for everything. I keep my clothes in those two cabinets over there. Still working on best organizing everything in here, making sure everything is accessible and where I need it to be. But I keep like my podcasting equipment and any electrical stuff I need on hand right here. And then this is like utensils. Here, let me see, hopefully nothing falls out. Let's see, okay. So yeah, that's another thing too. When you're driving around, if you don't have a way to store this stuff and you make some heavy turns, you open up this cabinet, it just stuff's gonna fall down on you like any, at any point. So I got these cool little bins to store things and still working on finding more efficient ways to maintain this. But for now, I just keep like my vitamins and my coffee stuff here. And uh, these latches are really cool as well. Sometimes you see a whole bunch of different kinds of van builds, but these are really nice, just super sleek, easy to use. And it's got like a little gravity, uh, gravity lever here. So it'll always shut on its own, which is nice. In designing the van, it was very important to me to have as much power and access to power as possible. Being that I do a lot of computer work and charging of cables and we live in the 21st century. And as of right now, power still works. So I wanted to make sure that I had all the ways to charge I could have. So I got these, uh, outlets with USB all over the van, two underneath the bed on each side. I got them kind of dispersed all around the van. So that way you can just charge. I've never had an issue with power in here. I've got 800 amp hours of battery with solar. So it's really just been a, a beautiful thing to not have to worry about power whatsoever, no matter where I am, even if I'm not plugged in. And uh, one of the things that came later in the design after living here for a little bit was a uh, little feature, but it's a little light that's above my bed. So when I'm laying in bed and it's complete dark, uh, before that light was there trying to come out and like go outside and have to stumble around in the dark, it was like, look for the remote, couldn't find it. I lost it in the bed a few times. And then God forbid you ever lose a remote, like can't turn the lights on. So uh, Bobby actually put that in for me, which is really cool. And it's just a real easy uh, way to just have a night light in bed. Don't have to worry about any remotes or anything like that. And, um, 
Also, I got these uh, little cool little mirrors that I put on here, a neighbor of mine gave me. Just a uh, nice little, again, the aesthetic is extremely important to me. I didn't just want functionality, I wanted it to look and feel cool in here. So we have the wonderful galley kitchen right here, and this is cool because it's just uh, a lot of counter space, works out really good, and I have this really cool little uh, folding extension for the countertop here, and you wanna maximize as much space as you can in a van. Of course, it's all about efficiency when you're living in a van down by the river. So this gives me a little bit extra counter space if I wanna put my computer here. I also have a little projector that I use to watch movies and I put a sheet and I can show you that later too. But I'll put my projector here and then be able to watch movies on a screen. Uh, so this will come down, save me some space. And I've got uh, plenty of counter space over here. I've got this little thing that I catch all for all my odds and ends things, but conveniently sits perfectly in my uh, gas propane stove here. And I don't do a lot of cooking in here. If anything, I'll make maybe eggs, something real easy. But generally it's just like boiling water for coffee or tea. Cause I don't really like to get this van smelling like bacon all the time. So um, there's underneath the sink, you've got um, kind of like your utility stuff. I got a paper towel rack here. And uh, this is the propane for the, the, the stove. So it's really easy to uh, change and use if you ever need to. But plenty of room. I got filtered water, hot running water, cold water, nice big sink. And I would love to show you one of the coolest things here that was like a, uh, a last minute addition to the van build when we were putting it together, which is a liquor tap. <laughs> so I showed this to uh, Bob and Adam and they were like, yes, that's a great idea. This thing I think was originally designed for like bartender use. So the, the wells for each one of these liquors, each one of the uh, buttons here is for a different type of liquor. So I've got whiskey, vodka, scotch, gin, and rum. I'm thinking about switching it from gin to tequila because I'm a proud owner investor into Blowfish Tequila, which I'm really excited to talk about later as well. This is such a fun little feature because it allows us to have a good little party vibe in here. But also, it's fun to play a little trick on people sometimes. What I do is I usually fill up the vodka with water and underneath the sink as well. This is where, uh, you can't really see it right now, but I have uh, a bunch of little containers. I didn't realize how big they were gonna be when I got this. For one container, a liter or a handle of vodka or a handle of any liquor only fills in about a third. So it's like, I, it's too much alcohol to have. So what I do is I fill it up with water so when I'll have people over here, I'll just be hitting the vodka button, knocking them back, and it's just water. But everyone's like, dude, like, how are you standing straight right now? And I'm like, ah, you know, it's just uh, after living in here for a long time, you start getting kind of used to it. Your tolerance goes up. But some people don't really know the difference between vodka and water unless you try it. So that's my own private water supply. But uh, it's a cool little function of the van, makes it unique. This goes right here and also the sink. This is cool. This extends out so you can, you know, wash dishes or spray people if you don't want them to come into the van. So this is called the Nautilus for a reason. It's based on one of my favorite science fiction works of all time, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. It's all about this like super advanced submarine before there were submarines. All the townsfolk thought it was like a sea monster. And the captain, Captain Nemo, is this like revolutionary guy who's liberating all these slaves around the world. So anyway, a little backstory with that is that this feels like a little land yacht to me. It's like a spaceship. And this control panel really makes it not just feel in my mind like a spaceship, it actually is a spaceship. This is my engineering control panel here. And uh, Camp Life Customs did a really nice job at putting all the controls for the van in a nice, easy to access place right here. Uh, so this is like your engineering section of the Starship. Uh, so I have a few different things right here. I've got a uh, inverter. So this is all the outlets and the USB plugs inside the van. Uh, turn this on or off and that will control the power. Also right here is my power monitor for my batteries and lets me know when the van is charging or collecting solar. Uh, right now I'm at 94% tells me how much time I have left if I wanted to leave all the lights on as is right now. It says about 75, 78 hours. 
So right now I'm not collecting any solar because I have a lot of lights on, but if I were to turn everything off, I would be collecting a little bit. I'm only drawing about 10 amps right now. That's cool, it tells you how much power you're using, how much time you have left on the batteries. Right now, if I just left it as is, I would have 75 hours of uh, battery life, but you know, when the lights go off at nighttime, you're not gonna be using that, so really it's way more than that. Also right here, I have the Fugatti. This is my hot water. Uh, my hot water sensor. This tells me when I can turn on the hot water, control the power right there for that. This is the uh, heating for the van. I have a diesel heater system, which comes out, I can show you later where the uh, heat comes out, but it runs off the diesel fuel in the van and it's super efficient. So in the chillier times, if you wanna take the chill out of the air in the morning or at night, you just pop this thing on here and it'll tell you, you know, what do you want to do heat how long you want it to run for and the temperature. And then this thing heats up really, really nicely. The entire van is uh, protected with four seasons insulation and kill mat. So it's like really soundproof in here and the heat and temperature will stay exactly what you want it to be, whether it's hot or cold with the air conditioning or the heat. So uh, control the heat with that. And this is the S-Pod, this is like the brain of the electronics of the van. This controls the lights, the overhead galley lights. Also controls the hot water or the uh, water pump. Also controls the lights that I have, which you can't really see right now because it's daytime, but I have lights above the sink and underneath the cabinet here. So it's really cool mood lighting and it's all controllable on a touch screen, very easy to use. I have lights on the outside of the van floodlights so at nighttime and i wanted to just illuminate everything outside if i was camping somewhere and i wanted to let thor out and not have to worry about like coyotes or whatever uh, i just turn all the floodlights on and it's very safe for everybody i mentioned too that when they built this curved wall the wiring that goes from here to the garage where all of the electrical stuff is they put in a really nice tube with a snake so that you can easily run wires if you need to change anything so there was a lot of forethought that went into the practical functionality of this van so that if there was ever anything that needed to be maintained, it could be done with ease. So that is a blessing because I would never have thought to do that. <laughs> a very surprising and beautiful thing when this van was completed and delivered to me from Camp Life Customs was that my dad and my mom and Camp Life Customs all conspired behind my back to surprise me with something beautiful. And right when I got this van was when my first dog, Isabel, Thor's mother, uh, passed away, like days before I bought the van. And my mom painted this really beautiful painting of my dog, Isabel, and my parents talked secretly with Bob to have them install this painting of my dog, Isabel, in the van. And I didn't know about it until I got the van. So when I got in here and he was showing me around, he closed the door like this. And as you can see here, they put this beautiful lifelike painting my mom did of Isabel into the door. I just broke down in tears when I saw it. It was just like, cause she was my first dog, Thor's mom. And I really wish she would have been able to see this van, but um, being in this van reminds me of her all the time. And she's just, she's my little, my little Isabel babini. So you cannot have a functional spaceship without a cockpit. And that's what we have here. Got this really great uh, feature where you got the seats that turn around. So the gad's another place for somebody to sit when you're parked, but this one also turns around, but I just tend to leave this one kind of as is if you ever need to like get in the car and go, it's ready to be there. But uh, one of the cool things that I figured out with a friend of mine when I went on a camping trip to Yosemite last year was uh, turning this entire upper area into a display for all the places I've been. So I've been starting to collect patches from different parks and locations I've been at. So eventually the vision is to have a patch for every single place I've been up here. I've got Las Vegas, I've got Mount Shasta, I've got the moon, I got Yosemite. I've uh, been to all those places, some more than others. Uh, this is actually an original moon mission patch from the final Apollo mission that was recorded. Uh, funny story I don't believe it is actually on the moon but I think uh, it was originally one of the mission patches from the control so anyway reminds me I'm in a spaceship I've got a little uh, 
light switch here for the uh, LED light bar out in the front. So I got plenty of flood lighting for if I'm out in the middle of the darkness, you can illuminate everything, but it also changes colors because that's one of the important things of my van. I need it to be trippy. I need it to be aesthetically beautiful. So uh, yeah, you know, and it's a beautiful uh, four, four wheel drive, 170 extended Mercedes. So this thing is really smooth, a lot easier to drive than you would think. Uh, it took a little bit of time to get used to driving such a long vehicle, but once you get the hang of it, this thing is super smooth and it's really easy. And uh, yeah, it's fun driving with just me and Thor, but it's always great having a co-pilot as well. So I've got this really great refrigerator right here. It's got a freezer. I don't have much in here right now. I might just have some like seltzers and some leftover wine from like a year ago. But uh, this thing is running all the time and it doesn't take much power at all. Uh, this is the one place where I get to put all the stickers that I've collected over time. Uh, I'm sure this will eventually be full, but uh, some of the ones I'd like to feature, this company that's based in Las Vegas called Recycled Propaganda, and they make a lot of really cool uh, make you think kind of stickers. So I'd rather be tracking anomalies than anything. I thought that represented the van quite a bit. And some Sasquatch stickers and some mushroom stickers, but we'll see how they uh, develop over time. So it's a, it's a huge fridge. Um, when I have things packed in here, it's again like a little bit like Tetris, but uh, there, it comes with a bunch of different little trays that I can take out and use depending on what I'm having in here. But I've had tons of food, cold cuts, vegetables, fruits, beer, whatever, you know, I've, I've never really run out of room. And, and also just having a nice fridge, knowing that I can keep all my things in here together and it doesn't draw a lot of power, which is like super nice. So the outside of the van is fully equipped with all sorts of cool stuff. I've got an upgraded suspension package, which is great. This thing is very heavy and the uh, black rhino wheels also gives a, another level of durability and safety when you're driving. I just feel like I could pretty much take this thing anywhere at any time. So that's really good to know. It's kind of uh, built like an apocalypse vehicle. You want to make sure that in the times of uncertain future, you want to be able to ride off into the sunset as Yellowstone volcanoes erupting behind you and not have to worry about hitting any speed bumps along the way. So I got uh, van speed uh, side rails for getting in and out of the van. Also a van speed roof rack. This is a very uh, large roof rack. It's pretty custom. They had to build it, I think, specifically for this van. Um, and when we go around the back, it kind of looks like, uh, reminds me of the Batmobile got these like little fins that pop off the side. So yeah, I got this uh, extended bumper as well. Again, the apocalypse vehicle. Part of my thought behind that was it's not necessary. I'm not gonna be doing a lot of off-roading with this van, but having the extended bumper was important because I was in a car accident one time where I hit a cow going 70 miles an hour in the middle of an Indian reservation. And uh, ever since then, it's kind of haunted me a little bit. So now I know at the very least, if anything horrible happens, I'll be okay. <laughs> also, another really cool thing that uh, was put onto this van, little like tension to detail, to wash this windshield, it's kind of uh, a little tricky because you gotta hop up onto the wheel and you gotta get a, gotta kinda get up there. So we put these uh, little handles on the, um, on the hood here so that you can easily get up onto the uh, tire and then wash the window with ease. And uh, let's see, so then, what else? Yeah, so you got the LED light bar up here as well. As I was saying, it is super bright. You don't wanna drive with that on, but also when you're camping somewhere, it's got color changing light function as well. So you can uh, kind of make this thing like a spectacle. At nighttime, I also have underglow, uh, um, say that again. Afterwards, we added an underglow LED lights underneath the van. So this thing has like a pulsing light underneath it. So this thing is like, literally looks like a spaceship at nighttime, which is really cool. But I'll uh, take you around the side of the van in the back and show you what else we got. Here is where your uh, shore power for plugging the van in to charge it directly at a campsite or if you're plugging it into a house, if there's no uh, solar capability plug this right in here and you'll have plenty of power. On the back, we've got the uh, spare wheel. Again, Black Rhino, these things are awesome. They're just super durable and they look really cool. Put on this little custom Mercedes logo to match the orange of the van. And uh, also 
You can see down here, this is a uh, custom uh, trail hitch cover, which has my logo for my uh, website, videoshaman.com. So on the back, open up the garage area. You can see what we're working with here. Now, uh, so like I was saying before, the toilet, you can see there's a box that conceals the toilet back there. And then this is for the desk that slides out from underneath the bed. And they did a really great job at just making it look, I mean, it's just super professional. Everything is super sleek and it was built to, built to last year. And as you can see, I got my vigilant, vigilant Thor keeping an eye out. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, you know, he's just keeping an eye on us, making sure we're okay. So on either side of the garage, we have different functions. We've got the electrical side over here. This is where all the batteries are control panel, fuses, anything electrical is over here. Easily pop this out by taking some screws out and there's some handles. If you ever need to change a fuse or anything, easy to access. Got another outlet here, so if you need to plug something in. I've got a uh, little air compressor. So just in case I need to like inflate my tire or deflate my tire or if wanted to put my electric bike that I also have that I'll put in back here, folds up. If I need to like inflate my bicycle tires, easily access, that turns on right here. So that's the air compressor. Uh, on this side, we have all of the plumbing. We've got the uh, 21 gallon fresh water tank, and I've really never had any issues with water. I've got two gauges, one for my uh, uh, hot water and one for my fresh water. I don't have a bathroom inside the van, but I did want to have a shower function or a shower, I keep saying the word function, function. Um, I do have this great outdoor shower here. So if you want to just plug this in with a little hose, you can take a little, take a little spritz when it gets hot outside. It's really nice. And uh, yeah, and then in the back, I basically just keep all my utility stuff. I keep my DEF uh, diesel fluid. I got a first aid kit. I got a, a bin with tools and camping equipment, extra propane tanks. And uh, this is my toolbox here. So I have anything I really need. So this, is, uh, this is the workshop, literally a garage. I like that term. But uh, as you can see too, like all these little wood inlays here from the same thing on the inside. And uh, yeah, one of the cool things too is like when you're out camping and just at a beautiful place, you could just pull up somewhere and open up these back doors. And then you just got like the most amazing view of wherever you're at, just right from your own bedroom basically. So can't, can't go wrong with that. So on this side of the van, we have some easy access to the roof. We've got this ladder where you can go and sit on a little platform. There's room for maybe like two people to sit up there. Just get a nice vantage point of wherever you're camping. Got access to the solar panels. I have two 150 watt solar panels. So combined 300 trickle charge on the batteries. I never run out of power. And it's just always a really wonderful peace of mind knowing that I have all the power I need, especially in a remote location. So I got the access for the water right here. Just throw a hose in and you could fill up anywhere. And the hot water Bugatti right here. So it's beautiful and it has a purpose. Also not to mention there is a awning that pops out here. There's a little crank, you just pull it out manual. I try to get as few electronic things as possible. Even though there's a lot of electronic stuff, they have these electronic awnings that pop out, but Sometimes a little manual crank, something easy, one less thing to worry about if it had like a motor dies. But that awning pops out and you got a nice little camping area set up. Also really cool uh, synchronicity that happened when I got the van. My company's called Va uh, Video Shaman. But the company that makes the roof rack and the uh, side rails and the bumper is called Van Speed. So when I got the van, I saw that their, their logo VS is all over the place. I was like, no way. Like I thought, I didn't realize, I thought that was something that they did like to surprise me, but it turned out it was just a coincidence that Van Speed and Video Shaman were the same thing. So again, another wonderful aesthetic and practical function to the band.